Let's roll. What's up, guys? Jason Payne. Welcome to the Sexy Business Status Podcast. I am your host. I'm here with my man, Andrew Gaitan. Mm, Gaitan, perfect. Gaitan, perfect. Yeah. Andale pues. Andale pues. Andale, pendejo, <laughs> olives. Uh, um, that was really funny. I, a meme just popped in my head where they were learning the word of the day, and it was it was like a little chihuahua said pendejo. It was really funny. You, you know why I love memes is because they remind us that we are all not that much different. That we all think a lot of the same things are actually hilarious. Dude, and yeah. So what's funny? I love I love the algorithms that Instagram and Facebook do when you're watching reels. Like, once you watch one, they're like, oh, they want to see all of these, right? Yeah. So right. there's one with chickens. I'll send you one. Once you see one, it, it's chickens, like, talking to each other. It is the yeah. funniest shit you ever heard. Like, they're just, like, talking mad shit to each other. But literally, like, chickens, like, bobbing their heads. And, like, <laughs> it's so freaking funny. Cause one of those I'm, animal voiceovers is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Like, yeah, the yeah, yeah. dog and the honey badger thing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's literally just, like, one of those. But, like, for me, it's therapeutic for me, to be honest, because it's... Because no, 90% of the content that I consume on social media... 90% of the time is personal development, business, motivation, that kind of stuff. Right. So it's nice to every once in a while. I have like a sex slash um, couple like therapy type ones. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah. so I, I get some of those, but then I randomly, uh, Saxony Whalen ironically posted one and I was like, this is hilarious. So I liked it. And so the algorithm's like, Poof, let's just throw a bunch of chickens at Jason. <laughs> so it was kind of fun. But. Um, anyways, Sorry, <laughs> fun little segue into our, into our episode here. So, Senor Gaitan. Um, yes, sir. So, we've been buddies for years. Mm -hmm. How long have you been in yes. Slate? I've been in Slate for four and a half years. Four and a half. You started your business right when I started in Slate. Oh, for real? August of 19. Literally, yeah. Like, I think I, I, I saw some of your very first social media posts. About what Slate Jason Jarvis said, you need to talk to this guy. Because you want to conquer the world, he wants to conquer the world. Sure. You guys need to chat. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. Freaking love it. Awesome. Yeah. So, four years. Yeah. So, what I want to, the reason why I wanted to bring you on mm -hmm. is for a few things, but most importantly, you're getting ready to do a show, right? Yeah, October 7th. Yeah. October 7th. So, yeah. this will probably air after that. Mm -hmm. But the point of it being is, I want someone that is like obsessed. So, people, I was just at Indy Elliott's event this past weekend yep. and uh, up in Fountain Hills. And he talked about being obsessed. I think of people being obsessed like a bad thing. But it, if you really want to get results with something, you got to be obsessed about it, right? Like if you're not obsessed about a girl and you're in the dating game and you're not obsessed about her and you're trying to like, yeah, whatever, like you're probably not going to land the girl and probably not going to get married mm -hmm. or even get her on a date. Because you got to yeah. be like, if you're just casual about it and somebody else has more passion, more drive and is obsessed with her, uh -huh. he even if he's uglier, he's more committed. He's going to get her more than you will. Oh yeah. Right. So that's where obsession comes into. So you're with bodybuilding, right? Yeah. Like if this dude was naked right now, you'd be like, round of applause, right? You see these Roman soldiers <laughs> right here. <laughs> and drew one of these that's up me. from my body. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the the commitment, the obsession, uh, the passion mm -hmm. behind it. What what makes you so excited to go and do a show like this that requires a shit ton of of focus of energy and passion, time, that the commitment levels are, I mean, just insane. Ins insane. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's definitely, it's hard, man. And I I don't think I realized what I was quite getting myself into when okay. I signed up for it. Sure. Which is part of the deal. But let's right? back up. So yeah. your thing's October 7th. How long have you been training for it? When did you commit and start training for it? So I originally hired my coach back in February because he trained my friend Jeremy and Jeremy just looked insane. Jeremy works for this pest control company. They have transformation challenges. He, I think, won the transformation challenge, and it was within like nine weeks. And I was like, I need to hire that guy. Send me his contact info. Hit hit him up. And, boom boom. And then he sent me a, a cutting a diet to cut from February to April, and then I lost like 10, 15 pounds. It so was all right. Ninety days. Yeah, okay. I wasn't like super strict on my diet, or whatever. But I've technically been. And then he was like, dude, you gotta compete. And then that was when we deci I decided to pull the trigger on it and use him. And so I've technically been on some kind of diet from like hardcore and, and since February. And training. I, I've been training for years. Like right, right. But, just, but, but to do a show <clears throat> is different than the training. Is, it your, is. your body's transformed. I've seen your body yep. yeah. a year ago compared to now. That's 40 pounds. 40 pounds difference. Yeah. That's wild, nuts. Man. Yep. So what, what does that look like? When you say diet, I mean, what's, what is something that... So people that are listening, small business owners, people that want to 
build a business, may or may not have kids, be married. Um, but you and I both know that health and fitness is like stupid important Stu as a small business owner. Mm -hmm. Like Andy Elliott talks about like that's, he's one of the only people that says that's the first thing you do. Cause you can't even have your mind right unless you get your body right. Exactly. Yeah. How are you supposed to have the energy to, to conquer what you conquer Jason Payne every day without being on the correct diet, without exercising. You send me videos every day. You walk in, do some push-ups yeah. every morning, bro. Yeah, and it's super inspiring and, and motivating. But that's something you definitely have to do if you want to if you want to be you or better, right? It's just right. what you're gonna have to do. So when it when it comes to that, is is it is it what to eat or was it what not to eat? For me, to get my health right, it was more of what not to. Eat. Like I was lactose intolerant. <clears throat> um, I got I got on the animal based carnivore diet for two years. Okay. Sort of following Paul Saladino and Liver King. Liver King's obviously right. He came out. Exactly. And but it doesn't matter. Like it, I think what he preaches is actually his aesthetic is is like enhanced, right? But he still works his ass off, and he still it's the principle. It's the principle. So I think what he's sharing is correct. I think it's right. Okay. The diet changed my life. I had some weird, I was developing some weird Hashimoto's like symptoms and then um, and then I was lactose intolerant, took all that away. That was what not to eat. Now dieting for a bodybuilding competition is all about what you eat and how often. Mm -hmm. And don't let mainstream media tell you otherwise. Everyone, like, I've noticed that actually- Don't let mainstream media tell you anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. it's like what you will learn from a coach is much different than what a social media guru will try to make you believe about fitness. It's sure. way different. Sure. The six meals a day changed my life. And I was like, I'm never eating white rice. Guess what, now I'm on white rice. I'm not on the animal-based diet right now. I'm just not. Um, it's lean, but um, like I'm drinking Better Life Shake sometimes. Before I never did that. I never had additives or anything before I did this cutting. But so now it's definitely more about what you eat and I've learned a lot through this whole experience of hiring a coach. So if you want to pull the trigger on it, hire a coach or talk to somebody that's been through it. Yeah, it's funny how we, you say, you think that, right? Like, oh, I'm not going to hire a rookie or a novice or someone that's never done it. Yep. We do it all the time. All the time. We take advice from people that like have never built a business. Like, yeah, so what do you, what do you think I should do? I'm like, dude, you work at University of Phoenix. <laughs> and you're trying to give me business like, advice on yeah. how, to, how to grow, how to run a business. Like, uh -huh. I just don't get it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why our book, Eight Phases of Eight Figures, that's why like, I have past tense, not like I am. Some people are currently doing it, they're building something, mm -hmm. right? Or like, you are getting ready for a show, but you've never done a show, right? Yeah, right. So th there's like three different ways, that's right? One. Yeah. Like, you've never done a show or you've never owned a business. Right. You currently own a business and are growing it or doing it or training for a show. Mm -hmm. And then the third tier is, I have done a show or multiple shows, or I have done, for example, $10 million in business. That is not like I'm trying to, or I'm getting there, or I'm projecting, like past tense, bitch, like last year, 2022, check mark, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of my, my thing when it comes to small business owners and the advice that you get from people. I'm very, very, very careful of who I take advice from. Mm -hmm. Like, I do, I wouldn't, I mean, it's my first show and everything, but I, I wouldn't feel comfortable training somebody unless it was like my third show third, fourth show. I'd be like, yeah, I, I could do this. You know, like, so yeah. I could Cause you're still figuring out what works and what doesn't work. Exactly for me. Right. And my trainer knows all that. He knows how to train people that are 50, that are 60, that are 18, that are like all Diff different metabolisms, it's, dude, different it's, body styles. People, it's crazy how uninformed people are because being this way, a lot of people ask you, what, what are you doing? You're not taking Ozempic? What, what are you, what are you doing, man? Right. It's like, I'm working out and I'm dieting with the coach. It's like, oh, well, can you send me that diet? It's like you're 50, it's not gonna work the same for you. Yeah. And you have to do it, it's just, it's, people just don't understand like what Oh, it's it like, takes. oh, you're, oh, oh, you're, uh, oh, you're a truck driver? Cool, can you, uh, can you hook your trailer up to my Prius? It's like, well, they both have yeah. four tires. Exactly. It's like, bro, it's different. Exactly, <laughs> right? it's much different. Yeah. Everybody's different and, yeah. and the age, it, I would say the age, not the number of the age, but the, but like the, the way your body is at that age, right? Exactly. Like Grant Cardone's 65. The dude has a freaking six pack and he's chiseled. Mm -hmm. He's got even more like chiseled and more like cut since he met Gary Brecka through. Dana years White, ago. dude. Look at Dana, Dana White too. Dana, Dana White was a chiseled. fat little Pillsbury Doughboy. He, was, he, was, he still had some muscle on him, don't get me wrong. Yeah. 
But like, dude, he, well, and he, he just looked like a thumb for a second. And he, and yeah. he looks way better too. Oh yeah. Right, like his skin, like it's oh, yeah. just yeah. the transformation there. And there's all kinds of stories. So how do you, how does someone take that kind of discipline and the health and fitness game that they've mastered that? Some people, Alex from Mosey talks about it. They talk about recruiting. They're like, go to a gym and go find all the gym rats because those dudes, they're disciplined. They're not scared to like hustle. Like so, yeah. like waking up early. Most of those guys aren't like, oh, I'm gonna roll in it. I'm gonna wake up at eight and go to the gym at eight thirty. Like most of those dudes are like cranking and hustling, right? Right. And right. so unless that's unless that is their job, yeah. but most of them that do it and they're just ripped, like massive discipline, not scared to sweat, not scared mm -hmm. to put in the work, mm -hmm. right? Um, they have to ha they have to be consistent, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't care who you are, you're not gonna get that jacked in two weeks, four weeks, even six weeks. Mm -hmm. It takes time. You gotta develop right. your muscles. Yeah. 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 So so there's consistency in there, and I feel like. As small business owners, one of the biggest things we don't do is we just want the short game, and we don't we don't see or believe in the long game. You got it. You got to believe in the long game, right? right? Yeah, but so for me, for example, like I, the long game is so important. But the only way you stay in the long game is by changing your mentality, and the only way you can change your mentality is if you just start. So the short, like the short game, getting that perfected will help you in the, with the long game and doing things like just doing it, you know, like being happy about it, trying to be happy about it, just doing all these things, you then start to find yourself in this like flow state. Totally. Of, like, dude, and, and, and that is, to me, that's an indicator of mastery. Like I'm not saying that I'm a master trainer, I'm a master, I'm, I freaking go, I'm master of taking care of myself, going to the gym, being disciplined and dieting, that's what I'm the master of. Like, I, yeah, maybe I could train some people, but like I'm master me, you know, and right. I often find myself in the gym in flow state all the time. I don't talk to anybody anytime anybody comes and talks to me, messes me up, any distractions. No, and the, the areas that I have that I'm most frequently in flow state are the areas I have less distractions and I mm. make it that way. So just something interesting hey. when you, if you're looking to get into it, just get started. Right. And you start seeing that gradual like, man, this is, I'm in a groove here. You know what's crazy? Dude, like yeah. flip that on social media. You know me right. from social media, right? Like, yeah. it's it, the the principle is still the exact same. Just start, right? It doesn't matter yeah. if it's good. You don't have to have, you know, a crazy tricked out podcast room, and you don't have to even have a podcast. Literally, a freaking iPhone and a free app, exactly. <laughs> an iPhone they already paid for, yeah. a free app, and press record and upload it, and just do that yeah. a lot, right? Which yeah, is funny. Like you're a master at at so many things. Like, I am a master at many things, but. Like podcasting, for example, mm -hmm. you're like, bro, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I was so concerned about it being perfect. Oh yeah, and it's like, like bro, just get just into it. Put it, it out. Put it out. Just put it out. And so, yeah, anybody that wants to get into it, just do it. Like, people don't care. Just get into the gym. Like a lot of people are like, like embarrassed, afraid. They don't really know what they're doing. Like nobody else really knows what they're doing. They're, anybody that tries to pretend like they don't, or like they do know everything about anything and everything that they're doing. Like, oh, unless you're training for a, bo a bodybuilding competition, a powerlifting competition, if you're just going in there to be healthy, you're a mad scientist. Like, you're figuring out what works and what doesn't, and it's a constant, lifelong learning. But that, yeah. that's the thing is, it's it's also, like they said, the consistency and the volume, right? Like, oh, yeah. okay, so in April, May, you're like, hey, I'm going to train, and I'm going to do this thing, it's in October. That's a solid six months, right? Yeah. So, but like... It wasn't six weeks or you didn't say, oh man, well, I'll wait five months and then the last month I'll just push really hard. Like, it's not a thing. Yeah. Just like going to the gym, I, was, I use this analogy all the time. Like, would you go to the gym once a week and think that you're going to get results? If you do, you're stupid. You, but a lot of you just are. Yeah, but a lot of people, they pat themselves on the back for that. It's like, dude, you know. You know what's funny is I didn't pat myself on the back. I couldn't even lift my arms above my head yeah. to pat myself on the back because I was so freaking sore. Yeah. So I'd go to the gym and I'd go like once a week or once every two weeks, maybe once a month. But when I go, like I go hard. I got to go hard. And because I have more time, my body, my muscles, I was so freaking sore. Like I didn't want to walk or move for like two or three days. Oh my God. And I'm like, this is stupid. And then I'm like a week later, I'm like, I don't want to freaking go work out. You see how much pain I was just in? And like, you know, you have the, the, the stalls, the railings on the stalls to sit down, the, the, like, the leg day memes. That's how I felt for like a week. 
And I'm like, this is stupid. Your drive and your motivation was far above what your, what your body was actually capable of doing. Totally. And so you're like, oh, oh you're no. like, I'm going to bear crawl this mountain, you yes. know, on an incline. And your body's just like, bro, we weren't ready for this. You're like, what are you doing? You're like, yeah. you're like, come on, catch up. You know? Yeah. And so, but once I realized, I'm like, okay, with frequency, with dating your spouse, frequency with playing with your kids, frequency with being on social media. It's me. Post post one post a week on social media, high five. You're yeah. not gonna get jack shit for momentum uh-huh. and results. You're not. You're just not. Yeah. Like it's so natural for you now. You're you're in a constant flow state with your business, social yes. media in particular. You dude, you are nonstop posting. It's incredible. Like that takes an incredible amount of discipline. And like you dude, it's just it's so cool to see. But I just I just see it well several reasons, but like one, it's accountability for me. So my, my push was I'm doing. So today I started the two, I had to do 200 in the month of October. To be honest, I didn't do yesterday. I did 110 yesterday. I Does forgot, it feel hard though? I forgot it was October yesterday. Yeah, is it <laughs> difficult for you to do that? Like to hit that mark? To, to do 100 to push-ups? Actually, well, to do 100 push-ups or just to post every day? Oh, so po- no, posting comes natural to me. Natural. Um, the reason why is because uh, I, if you don't track what you're doing, you uh-huh. don't know if it's gonna work or not. If you don't track what you're eating, then you might as well just go and eat freaking hamburgers and fries. Why? Because you don't know if it's going to help you or hurt you unless yeah. you track it. Yeah. Or you look at the skill and you're like, oh shit. But guess what? Even then, that's tracking. Mm-hmm. Right? You're like, okay, I ate shit for two or three weeks. I went out of town and I put on X hundred pounds. Okay, so that means every time I go out of town, if I don't work out, I'm going to put on X hundred pounds. Yes. Um, we did $3.1 million from free organic social media posting. Like, who would want to add $3 million to their business? Me. So last last weekend, I'm not gonna say who. There was a, there was a, a a group, a real estate group that I did an event, and they had this social media chick on or whatever. And I'm like, dude, no offense. How much money have you gen- have you generated on a, in in one year from social media? She's probably gonna say one, two, three hundred thousand somewhere around there, right? And but to her, she's like, you only make a quarter million dollars in social media, like that's gangster. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I did more than you. Like I smoked you, and they didn't ask me to come on. I'm like, mm-hmm. it's cool, not a problem. I still sponsored the event. I'm like, why would you not ask me to do that? Because I'm a, I'm a roofer. And, but what they don't know on the back end, I was like, that's inter- like, what she does for a living. Yes, and I, I stalked her. I looked her up. She has thousands of views. But dude, views don't pay the bills. Last time I checked, hearts don't pay the bills. Shares don't pay the bills. It gets you exposure, but if it's the wrong audience, it doesn't freaking matter, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so, with me, when that particular thing, and this all comes down to the principle, right? Me, that flow state of me posting, I know, one, I set the tone for three people. I set the tone for myself, I set the tone for my, my State 48 team, and I, set, and I set the tone for those that are in my consulting business. Mm-hmm. Because if I tell them to post, and I don't post, I'm a hypocrite. It's a lot of pressure, yeah. Yes, the, like, you, it's crazy. When you, when you coach somebody, whatever you coach them to do, you do not get <laughs> to not do that. So you, you, you you set yourself up for that though like on purpose I told yeah I told my family I said hey my show's October 7th you guys can come am I gonna pussy out now like, no there's no yeah. way they booked their flights what if they paid what if, what if they showed you that they paid fifteen thousand dollars to come watch you on October 7th <laughs> I would not there's no way there's just no way that's that's, that's what I do with consultants yeah. Yeah. and so when it whatever it comes down to like if I if I tell you Hey, make sure you're working out, and I don't, and I don't work out, and I'm putting on all this weight, and I'm a fat, lazy slob. Mm-hmm. Like, what kind of a coach am I? Uh-huh. And it mine's not directly fitness; it's indirectly fitness. But at the same time, like, I can't hold these other guys accountable. Like, dude, get your ass in the gym. No, yeah. I'm sending them pictures. By the way, what I send to you, uh-huh. it's not, it's not a mass text; it's individual, okay. and it's about 30 to 35 people. It takes me 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. So I, so I actually started doing two 45 minute walks in the morning because my first 45 would be me doing push-ups or a video or something along, or at the gym uh-huh. and then I go and walk for 45 minutes because it takes me 45 minutes uh-huh. to post and text it to everybody in that thread like that's how long it takes me to do it to create the video edit it and then send it to everybody and then like that's okay and I do two circles and that was one of them is that great yeah. dude that's why and the, mar- there's the marketing genius behind that too a part of it is like if you if one more you didn't send it right. I notice I'm like, dude, Chase, isn't that crazy? crazy? And then, yeah, like, that's, that's just genius, bro. It's, it's nuts. Crazy. It's nuts. And so that's what happens when you do it over and over and over again. Like I said, there's massive accountability that comes to it because yeah. now you have people depending on you to do it. I also do it because 
my I want my team to do it. Well, if the yeah. owner's not doing it, why the hell would the team do it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that goes with anything, right? Yeah. If, I, if I'm not making follow-up phone calls, I'm not getting up on roofs, I'm not talking to clients, I'm not going to, I'm not sponsoring events, uh -huh. why would I ask my team to do that and then me not do it? Hey, make sure you work on your health and your fitness, and I don't work out anymore. And I'm doing that crap. You know what I mean? This principle right here, right? Right. That's what it's about. The leaders, are, it's, they're, at, they're at the very front or at the, they're at the very back. If they're at the very back, they're helping push people to keep them going, right? right. And so that's kind of been my, my biggest thing there is, it, what are we going to do? That's why I, I love Andrew on several different levels, but that's one of them is I'm, I'm not physically at where he is, even pre-show. Like, I just, like, I look up to you because I'm like, dude, you're disciplined. If we like tweak tweak a couple things here and there for like for business or maybe family stuff. A lot of us will go like gangster with one thing and then we'll neglect the others. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's the hardest thing in life is to be consistent in all those categories. Be consistent with your marriage, yeah. be consistent with your kids, be consistent with your business, and be consistent with yourself. And, and the honest truth, guys, is like I haven't found how I could balance this with my family life. Like it has not been in balance since I've been doing this. Like my wife called me the other day and she was like, hey, I just, I miss you. Like, I miss you too. My son the other day said, dad, I don't want you to go to the gym. Stay here, please. Sure. And I looked at him and I was like, oh, dude, I gotta get my car going, bro. Like, I have to go. Yeah. And then it sucks, but, you know, with, with practice and you find a good median and, you know, com competing is a whole nother level. It's a whole different thing. It just depends on what you want. Like, right. And I, right now, I don't necessarily feel like that. As a matter of fact, I feel... I feel, I don't feel great. <laughs> sure. I don't feel great. Um, I feel really light and my clothes fit me much better. And I look good with my shirt off, but I don't feel amazing. Before yeah. competition, I felt amazing. Right now, I don't. Yeah. So that, that's something that, it, that's, and that's the constant struggle. Same with myself. Like I, I built my business and it was great. And I neglected my wife and my kids. I started another business, went to business with stupid people. And it bit me in the ass, and I've had to do a lot of apologizing and a lot of fixing the relationships that I'm still doing. It's been almost a year now that I'm still going through and, and uh, making sure that I check all those boxes every day, right? And just being intentional. Like, if you're going to go on a date with your wife, you're going to spend time with your wife, like, turn off everything. Turn off, just be 100% with her. Even if it's at your house watching a show for an hour or two. Like, our, our wives don't need us all day. Our kids don't need us all day. But when they want us, like, be, like, Shut off work, be intentional. Shut off work, be intentional, or, or shut off the kids, as funny as that sounds. Like, shut off the kids and go to date night, like no kids. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, we're doing date night. There was two kids, I'm like, that's not date night. I was like, they're, they're a distraction to you and your spouse trying to connect. They just are. Not, mm -hmm. not in a mean way, but there's a time and a place to connect. And then like I said, when you go to the gym, you, you just said, I, I, I kill it when I'm not distracted, mm -hmm. right? And so oh, that's, yeah. that's kind of how I get it too. Like, mm -hmm. when you're there, you focus on yourself. So the four things. Don't forget to focus on yourself first, you, yourself, and God first, then your spouse, then your kids, then everything else. And if they get out of whack, you'll feel it, right? And you've got to recommit and jump back into that. And that is a daily thing that we have to do over and over and over again. And that's why I preach it so much because I personally have not made it a prior, made that in that order a priority for a long time. Mm -hmm. And from the Andy Elliott's to the Sean Whalens to some of my mentors, like, they're like, dude, like, make as much money as you want. You're so miserable as fuck. And I'm like, oh, that's funny because that's exactly how I feel. Jason, you're killing it. You're ripping business. Your social media, your podcast, your book. You're great. And I go home and I feel like a freaking piece of shit. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, your your priorities are fucked up. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. So like, so if I do this, 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 then I'll be happier. They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And so I start doing it. And I'm like, oh shit, it works. Yeah. You just but, have, you, you have to define what you what you want and what you're willing to give up. Right. And if that's a conversation you have to have with your wife, like your wife probably, like before you started your business, I'm sure you, like your wife didn't really understand what it would take completely. Oh, 100%. Right? And you, you, you maybe didn't even either. And the, the disciplined individual, the motivated individual that you are, man, that's a, that's a huge shift to drive. Like that's, yeah. that's a lot. And dude, like, like on Joe, do you have to go? I gotta go, but yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. real quick. So the Joe Rogan podcast, Ross Edgley, he, I don't know if you remember who he is, but he swam across all of Britain, like all of the UK, <laughs> insane, insane, around, around the UK. And Joe Rogan said, dude, you'd probably be a BC or UFC fighter. Um, he was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, because of like your discipline. Like, if you, like if you can do that and be tough enough for that, you can do this, bro, and crush it. And it just, it carries over to so many things. That's why everything that you do, man, 
you just do so well at it. It's because of that discipline. I think it needs consistency and discipline, bro. Yeah. Thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely, dude. So, hey, if you guys want to follow Andrew and get any uh, physical, fitness, tips, health, dieting, all that kind of stuff, I reach out to him like, hey, what are you doing this? Why do you do this? What works here? Don't eat this. Don't do this. So, um, so you don't have to. <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> That's, a, that, that's why people kind of say, hey, how'd you do this? I was like, well, I fucked up here, here, and here. Don't do these things. Like, oh, that's great. Thanks, Mike. So, yeah. anyways, appreciate you guys. Hope you're doing well. Keep your fitness and your health in check every single day. Work on yourself. Make yourself a priority. You're good. Cool, man.